As a successful entrepreneur and business leader, how do you prioritize your mental well-being amid multiple business ventures? I think the important thing is to always bear in mind what is your uh, desired outcome. That means uh, you must know when you're getting into a business, at the end of the day, what uh, your conclusion should be and how you want to uh, exit the business. Did you encounter mental health challenges while building your companies and how did you manage them? The stress everybody experiences is sometimes how you respond to stress. Uh, everybody goes through difficult times because business is like that, it's up and down. So it is not uh, that you will not encounter stress, it's how you respond to stress. So in my case, I do yoga and yoga meditation. In your experience, how does a mentally healthy workplace contribute to increased productivity and overall success in a business? I find that if uh, your employees are worried all the time, then they're not focused on actually uh, doing the job better. So the important thing is to actually allay the worries uh, that uh, human beings normally have. You have a lot of worries. So once that happens and they focus on the, the job on hand, then they can do it successfully. And then you'll find that at the end, their worries become unimportant or doesn't, re uh, doesn't come into reality. Do you know, realize that 99% of the things that you worry about never happen? You just go through a list. Every time you worry, you write down. And then at the end of the day, 99% of those worries never happen. How do you encourage work-life balance among your employees, given the demanding nature of the retail industry? Uh, nowadays, uh, the, the internet generation, you're talking to each other like, non-stop 24 hours. There must be a beginning and an end to you know, work conversation. You start at 9, you finish at maybe 6 or 7. After 7 o'clock, it should be like, a secret, holy time for you all to spend with yourselves and your family. Don't send each other text messages, don't send each other emails, don't send each other reminders. Because why? Under the Employment Act of Malaysia, you're only required to work from 9 to 5. One hour lunch break. So, you're already doing the company a favour. You're actually working until 7pm, right? But then why do you never send messages to each other from 7 p.m. onwards until the next morning. Right? Your generation, all on your laptops, your handphones, your company tablets, you're so used to sending each other messages in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So you disturb each other's sleep. Man. Where do you when do you sleep? When does the internet generation sleep? To my mind, you all don't get to sleep very well. Uh, our generation. After 5 o'clock, that's it. But the boss cannot call you, you should also answer your boss. You have a right not to answer your phone. Now, can you do that? Next morning, you'll be saying, you know, why did you answer my email? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you read my email? Why haven't you done any work on that email? Mm -hmm. You tell them, Employment Act don't require me to do so. And if you dare uh, score this against me as a bad mark, I'm going to sue you the Labour Tribunal.